right, Uncle Sam is back, and we are ready now for the NCAA tournament. Tony Stark, in his first year, has led the Buccaneers uh, to the big dance, as we like to call it here in, um, in the United States. And uh, first round opponent is Maryland. In the last video, I showed you how um, Maryland has a very historic program. Unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> I have no scouting information whatsoever on their team. I can't see any of their players' um, attributes. I can't. I don't have scout ratings on anybody, so I know very little. The only thing I can real I really know about Maryland is that it looks like they play a four-two-three-one, which. Probably that means they're going to be pretty aggressive. And so um, I've made a couple tactical changes, and I'll get to that in a moment. But first, just kind of looking at my situation, um, my first 11 is – actually, my first 23 is relatively healthy. Uh, I do have an injury to a player in, who is not even registered, but I'm I have, I'm at full health. I've had a really lucky year injury-wise. I've only had a couple of little um, – you know, niggly in, in, uh, injuries that, you know, nothing significant. So I've been lucky this season as far as that goes. But I do have a, a very important player who is suspended. Paul Barron has probably been my best player this season. Um, he might not have the absolute highest rating, um, but and I'm not, let's see over here we got this is the last five games. Um, yeah, he does. He has the highest rating, 7.29. So as you can see, he's he might have been my best player. And, and if you look at my um, these attributes right here, or what I consider my most important my most important six attributes for all of my players, and he, uh, as you can tell, mostly highly rated. He's not, you know, he's a seven in composure and a five in vision is not great, especially for you know a midfielder. But I. He plays more of that um, than the six role, so it's more important for him to win the ball, which a 17 determination, 18 work rate, those are the two attributes you want for that um, that position. So he's been a very important player, but he's got a yellow card suspension, so he is not available. Um, I've had to replace him with a player I have, Derek Lee, who is not terrible, but he has a much lower determination. And uh, his, you can look at his rating, it's obviously nowhere near Paul Barron at 6.78 on the season. Um, st uh, Statistic-wise, um, let me select him so that we can see. Um, yeah, he's, he's had four starts, come off the bench 13 times. He does have a goal and a 90% pass percentage. I'm going to extend that, yeah. Um, so, you know, he's not, it's not like he's, he's been a liability when he's been on the field, but he's not Paul Barry. He's not going to, you know, bring us that level of play. So that's a significant loss for us. So with that in mind, I'm doing something that I don't like doing. I've, I've altered my tactics pretty significantly. Um, I've created a special version of the, my, of this tactic and I'm going to be using it during, uh, well, I've created a special version of my base tactic, and I'll be using it really probably for the the whole tournament as far as I can get. Here's kind of my theory on this. So I have a style of play that I like, and it's I'm sure a lot of you have a very similar style of play. It's a four three three, you know, tiki taka. Um, uh, you know, it's based you know largely on uh, Barcelona under Pep, and even to an extent Manchester City, uh, and. You know, it's it's the style of play that I've used all season with success. But now I'm going into the tournament where it's you know it's a do or die. You you, you if you lose, you're out. It's it's a knockout competition. So um, and I, I understand I'm going in probably as one of the least talented teams on the whole in the tournament. Um, as this these are the these are the best teams in the country that I'm. In this tournament with uh, this is not the Southern Conference so um, the theory is kind of that I'm gonna try and limit my mistakes uh, I'm gonna try and you know be the team that just does not beat themselves and so one thing I, I first thing I did was I took my left back and in my regular tactic he's a wing back he is on defensive duty but because he's a wing back he you know contributes to the attack well I've made him a no-nonsense fullback so he now is going to stay back. He's not going to press forward. 
Um, so that way, really, I'm I'm kind of all, I'm I'm gonna have three guys in the back at all times. Even even when the other player, uh, when my right back pushes forward, he's staying back. So I've got three back at all times. You know to you know play against any sort of counterattack. Um, then on the right, my um, my right back, I've changed to an inverted wing back. So he's gonna be charging out into the wits less. Um, and in fact, what he'll probably do more is occupy the space here, right? He's going to move in uh, and kind of settle in as a second defensive midfielder. Part of the reason I'm doing that, and that's something that I might change depending on the opponent, but Maryland is coming in with a 10 playing behind the striker. And so I'm kind of wanting to give uh, Lee, the holding midfielder, I wanted to give him some help with the second option towards the middle of the field so that, um, you know, kind of create a two versus one situation there um, so that so that that 10 can't mark Lee out of the play. And because if he does that, then my back line is just going to be in that endless um, knocking the ball around between each other and then we lose it. So um, to me, it's a sound theory. We'll see how well it works. And uh, I've also set my, since my left back is no longer charging forward, I've taken off, I usually have my left winger with the instruction of sit narrower. Uh, I've taken that away. Um, I, I'm not going to make him go wide yet. but Because uh, I, I still have the play through the middle um, instruction listed. So, um, so I want him to have, to be moving in some. But I, I do want him to be a little wider than he would normally be set in, in the typical situation. And what hopefully it does is it also leaves a little more space for Halleck uh, to charge forward who, and contribute. So at the idea, partly the idea is that I'm hoping to create kind of a 3-4-3, but it's really like a 3-2-2-3. Three, two, two, three. Um, try and control the middle of the field, you know, have more options there, while also leaving enough guys back to um you know to not be to not get caught too high and um you know make mistakes in the back so it's it's this is again and, and this is i guess kind of a more negative approach than i prefer to play but hey i'm trying to i'm trying to go in as deep as i can into this tournament um tactic changes here i have increased my passing directness i want them to be able to play the ball a little further um and then in transition, I don't think I made any changes there. I may end up um, taking off hold shape and go to counter, and I'm just flipping those. I go to regroup and counter, and then out of possession, I drop my line of engagement and I drop my line. Um, again, this is not my normal style. I don't like playing this way uh, as a rule, but I'm I'm taking what I have and I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to you know get as far as I can uh, in this tournament and you know help build the reputation of the team now, I don't I don't expect to have a chance of winning this thing it would me winning this tournament would kind of probably be like a um, uh, a league one team and winning the FA Cup <laughs> which you know not impossible but it's a big ask so I am actually listed as the favorite um, that's, that is a bit of a surprise. It must be taking into account the results from this season because Maryland probably has a much better squad than I do. They won the Big Ten regular season title, as you saw in the last video. All right. And unsurprisingly, they are coming out to 4 2 3 one. Um, Although it looks like they they don't have advanced wingers. Um. They are going to be cautious, so I think I'm going to go. At least that's what I'm being told. We'll see how. I'll, I'll, I'm going to start cautious and then see where it goes from there. Yeah, so they, it's a, it's just your standard four, two, three, one wide. So my uh, strategy holds, and they are going to. So I'm, I am going to be a little more positive. I'm going to be a little more aggressive, but. Not gonna gonna keep an eye on that. And let's see. 
We, we have, we're building something here. Castaneda takes it to the byline, crosses in a header over the bar. Okay, so an encouraging first three minutes. And really, it looked like just, I mean, I obviously haven't seen, I don't have much um, <laughs> to go on here, but it looked like everything was going as according to the plan. And we have a yellow card. Let's see what happens. Oh, Padone with a header off the bar. Zian Jones loses it. So let me go ahead and take him off of uh, hard tackling. Okay, uh, and Rodriguez now. That's really good. I'm All my backs are getting yellow cards, and we're barely even. And I'll go ahead and give another get creative shout. Apparently we've got a Nazi referee just handing out yellow cards like it's candy at Halloween. Uh oh they have a free kick here. Headed out. Ooh, Halleck, and we'll see if we can get a counter here. Padone lays it to the right for Jones, whose shot is saved. All right, can I get one more shot in before the half? Yep. Ooh, and Maryland with a header. Luckily, Santangelo is there. And Lira, three cards in the first half. That is not a good situation. All right, switch it. Good. Here's Halleck. And he drops it to Lee, to Lira, to Rodriguez. And yeah, out there, you know, I may end up letting Rodriguez go forward because it looks like width is going to be a problem right there. Ooh, Jones has a ball with a hard tackle, but he wins it back and gets tackled again. Put a heavy touch on it, but he's got it back in and we're off the bar and then uh, put it across the line. Okay. All right. So, um,. Not going to change anything yet, but as I said, it did look like I was having some width issues out there. So maybe what I need to do, um, perform well, keep it up, result will come. So first of all, I need to, uh, somebody got to yell, Lyra, ease off his tackles. And then I'm going to have my right wing to stop sitting narrow. That's Jones. And we'll see where we, where we go from there. And he sends it long. Ooh. The Maryland shot is deflected out for a corner. And they get another corner. Randia. Okay. Win that goal kick. And there we go. There's Jones. Yeah, see, now he's out wider and we get a shot. Okay, so hopefully that solved that situation without having to get my fullback charging too far forward. I, I gotta say, I think my approach is working. Jones now takes it in and the shot goes wide. Ooh. All right. Let's get it back, boys. I also have to watch for when Maryland uh, starts going for the win. They're going to do that at some point. To Lira, but yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're, we're controlling the run of play for the most part. No, uh -oh, here we go. This could be. Oh! And Santangelo picks that corner up out of the air, and we're going the other way. Let's tell the guys to get creative. I need a goal. Just give me one goal. Well, if I'm going to be wishing for... Oh, Jones. Oh, Jones. Shot was blocked. If I'm going to be wishing for things. Let's get two or three goals. All right, we're an hour in. Still, I think, you know, in good shape. Don't want to sub yet. Lee shot goes right into Aaron Diaz's hands. Baron takes my free kicks when he's available. Oh, this is not good. Counterattack shot just wide. <laughs> um, 
I also, from what I've seen, just looking at individual play, and I'm going to leave my starting 11 all the way in for, for the 90. Uh, they're dropping back. Hmm. All right, so... Largely uneventful half. They're making some subs. I guess I should start... Hmm. I'll think about it. Okay. All right, here we go. They're going defensive, so I tell you what, I'm gonna be I'm gonna go attacking. I'm gonna go a little more aggressive. Surprised that Maryland has dropped back this much. It must be their their manager. Their manager must be really defensively mind, uh, have a defensive mindset. Because they, for, again, what I've what I've seen, just looking at watching the game individually, Maryland has much better players. Now here's where I have to start making a decision. I've not made a single substitution. And I'm looking at my penalty takers. And my best penalty takers are on the field. All right, so here we go. Second uh, period of overtime. And I'm going to give the guys one last shout. Get creative. Get me a goal. So I've made some subs to prepare for the, the shootout. Oh, which we almost blew right there. <laughs> Santangelo was a nice save. Um, I did. I put in some players with the hopes that we'd be able to get the goal. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. And then I made some subs for the shootout. So, and here we go. We got to have our shootout. All right, Lucitero up first. We kick first, and Lucitero slots at home. I haven't decided if I like kicking first or I, I guess I like doing it first. And then Maryland hits their first one. Kicking first, you know, kind of whatever. Puts the other team under the pressure. All right, there we go. Um, see how well I went about choosing my takers, my shooting order. Campbell puts his away, so it's 2-2. Two -two. <sighs> Padone. I uh, usually, my first five, I, I <laughs> composure is one of the necess necessary attributes for me for the first five. Uh, Maldonado. Maldonado off the post. So we need a save here. And we don't get that one. So now it's do or die for Mendez. He has to make this one. And then we have to get a miss from Maryland. Okay. So we still have some hope. Land again. I've always wondered how the AI selects theirs. I guess they just probably go by penalty attribute, and he makes it. They made all theirs. We missed one. All right, so a tough way for the season to end. Um, but um, just looking at the stats, you know, we 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 were the better team, I think. Um, and then the stats bear that out: sixty percent possession, eighteen shots to eight. Um, we did have a clear cut chance. They had a half. Um, yeah, disappointing way to lose. But I, I'm trying to look at the positives. I, I'll say this too. My, um, I'm intrigued by that tactic that I I used. I, I I'm gonna put that in my pocket. Um, it was kind of based on the circumstances and my players. As I did not. You know, my back line was not very good, so I tried to, all season they really were, <laughs> that was the weak part of my team. So I, you know, tried to um, provide cover for them by, you know, keeping them, being a little more defensive with them than I usually am. Um, so, but, you know, it it worked, I think, for the most part, from just from my observation. Um, let's look at the match stats real quick. Uh, player stats. Let's look at their stats. See, I don't remember who was their number 10. Um, I guess it was probably this guy. 
Nice striker. He probably is the left winger or the right. Yeah, left winger. So Campos. Yeah, so let's look at Campos' stats. 81%. You know, that's that was about the highest on the team. But you look at, he only 16 passes. All right. So that's, or is that completed? Either way, that is one of the lowest numbers on the team. So he didn't get the ball much. Um, yeah, I'll look at all that stuff. I'll evaluate that later. But just like eyeballing it, the the tact that my my changes worked, and that feels good when you make tactical changes before a match, and they kind of work to the way you hoped that they would. Just didn't finish, you know. We just just couldn't put the ball away we had our chances didn't um didn't take them and so that's what happens you know um maryland was able to get to the to the lottery and they won it so um yeah i'm gonna tell them can't fault any of the performances just one of those days so that's the end of this season um tough way to lose but you know proud of the effort against the superior opponent um Next episode will probably be kind of a recap. I'll look. Uh, we'll. We'll. I'll show you what happened for the rest of the NCAA tournament. I'll look around the rest of the United States, and and then maybe kind of preview my what I need to get done going into next season to um, to improve upon what we did this year. So this is Uncle Sam FM, and I am signing off. I will see you next time.